Australia, nice to have your company. Wherever you're watching us right around the country, this will be a great race because the Australians are doing so well and Michael Doohan has attacked the circuit that attacked him last year. Oh, it's great. And a lot of people were sort of surprised when he got pole position and said, well, surely he'd be worried. But uh, the problem really wasn't with the circuit last year. It was with the mugs that were so-called surgeons that were supposed to look after him. So I'm not surprised at all to see him on the pole. That's his first one since Hockenheim last year. Yeah, great ride. And, of course, uh, let's bring you up to date with what happened in practice. Farron Hotham has put some highlights together for us. This was a chilling reminder to Michael Doohan, Assen is one of the most dangerous layouts on the Grand Prix circuit. This freak accident during early practice yesterday. A fall there last year cost Doohan the World Championship, so you wouldn't blame the Aussie for going slow this time. But it wasn't the case. Doohan claimed pole, plenty of practice and quality workmanship in the pits, all important. We spent a lot of time basically in the pits and just trying to put, put together a lot of laps with a lot of different setups and, and the bike feels pretty good and it just seems to come together but um, you know I didn't want to come here and ride a bike but didn't feel good so we've spent a lot of time getting the bike working fairly good and it, it seems quite good. Working that well, he's sitting on pole, Bass. <laughs> Can't get any better than that. Mick Doohan, pole position. Kevin Schwanz, Alex Barros, and great for BT. I mean, to learn this circuit first time round, that's really good. Second row of the grid, Dougie Chandler, Wayne Rainey, Ito and Creville. Third row of the grid, Catalora, Maladin doing good also to learn it so quickly. Neil McKenzie and Michael Rudrock. Championship points, Kevin Schwantz running away from Rainey at the moment, Daryl Beattie catching up, Alex Treville, Ito and McDoohan at six. Talking about Kevin Swantz, there have been some absolute idiots from around Australia who have been faxing overseas after the incident of last, uh, the last race when Kevin Swantz looked like uh, in the coverage that he'd come together with Michael Doohan and forced Michael off the track. Now, of course, during the race, Barry and I made comment to that because it was a very exciting race and Mick had gone to the front. And I cannot believe that some people have uh, sought to, to send some information uh, that's been very derogatory to Kevin Swans overseas. And we've uh, found out about this. In fact, we have copies of some of the faxes. And I, I just can't believe some people's mentality. Well, it's just surprising because um, when Schwantz came close to doing it, I said, oh, it looks like, you know, Schwantz has made Doohan go straight on and then when Doohan stopped I said well you know forget that thing about Schwantz obviously something's wrong with his bike anyway we'll have a look now watch here you see Doohan starting to slow down now Schwantz Doohan's already decided to go straight on Schwantz came very close to him and to me it looked like Schwantz had come out wide then if you look back you see there on the left hand side Schwantz um, Doohan rather just stopped coming out the chicane then going into the pits and that's when i said oh you know i'm not quite sure about that thing with um with kevin schwantz now look at the back wheel of mick Doohan's bike you can just see the tires all deformed and pattering around schwantz comes over to take the line Doohan has already decided he's going straight on at uh, the chicane and you see there you know he's he's pulled out of the race but um when I went back the next day, I looked at the um, videotape, slow mode it, I could see the tyre, and I still really couldn't understand mm. it. Then I saw the press releases, mm. but, um, you know, in no way, shape or form was it Schwantz's fault. No. But to me, when he came out wide, it looked like Schwantz made him pick it up. But when I saw what had happened, you know, it's... Uh, but can't if believe. he didn't have a Texas uh, accent, you could almost say he's an Australian. He's a great fella, and uh, it's really upset him, so... I just hope that the same idiots that sent those uh, nasty remarks over can maybe send a few apologies over as well. OK, we'll take a break, come back with the Dutch Grand Prix for 500 bikes, the Aussies on pole. Rev it up, rev it up, bit of oil. Bikes on the parade lap now, the warm-up lap, the 500cc bikes out on this Assen circuit. Beautiful layout here. Barry, I know it's been described by a lot of people who perhaps don't understand fully that it's a very dangerous place. In fact, it's the reverse. It's quite a safe place. Well, it is. You know, it was always reckoned to be one of the safest Grand Prix circuits of the year. And uh, the reason that... Uh, people have said it's dangerous is because there's quite a lot of crashes there because of the nature of the surface of the circuit is so good that people try very very hard 
I think you can see a really good race tonight, Des, because um, there's a lot of people in this that uh, uh, could figure quite well, not surprisingly, Chandler for one is a guy to look out for, and Alexander Barros. I wouldn't be at all surprised. I'll stick my neck out and say that this is where Barros could get his first Grand Prix win tonight. Bold move from you. You're normally two laps out before you make a prediction into the uh, Crystal well, you Ball. You never make one. You always say, well, who are you going to pick then? Well, no one would take any notice of me if I made a pick. But uh, the big problem in practice has been uh, the qualifying times were very marginally faster than they were last year. And the reason uh, was that Mick was Mick Durham was saying that the wind has been so bad, Holland being so flat and the circuit being so flat, that when you get a crosswind, especially in a place like this fast right-hand kink here, it's extremely difficult to get the bike to lay into a corner. So uh, looking at the trees in the background now, it doesn't look windy, which is really handy. But if you look at the crowd, everybody really rugged up. You can see them with blankets and big parkers on side. So say there is wind there, and it's pretty cold, Barry, as they come round now to form up. And a big hello to uh, a lot of people who really are into motorcycle racing around the Liverpool area of Sydney. And uh, had the pleasure of being out that way last night, and people wanted a call, so we'll call you anywhere in Australia, because we know that you watch all around, but Liverpool... Pearl, nice to have you aboard. Right. Right. Now, you look at Mick Doohan's on the right-hand side of the screen, pole position. Now, to my mind, the guys that, have, that should get a good start here are Rainey and Chandler, because they're on the second row of the grid, but they're in slightly better position than Doohan is. So it doesn't, because the grid's so spread apart, it really doesn't make that much difference being on the second row of the grid. So watch Chandler, number five. Set for a start. Watch for the green, red on now. Revs building up underway now. Everybody gets away nicely. Off the centre of the grid. Looked like the way to go. Look at that. Right, uh, coming in. Who we got? At Schwantz, Beatty, Doohan, Creville. No, Creville, then Doohan. And after that, it's anyone's guess. Bit of a gaggle there. Plenty of bikes streaming through. Look at this circuit. Fantastic. Love this place. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great circuit. And it's very, very 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 hard on tires so most of the guys will be using quite hard tires so they'll be just setting the tires in for the first couple of laps because it's one of those circuits because it's so abrasive it uses tires very very hard uh, you need to use a very hard compound tire so the guys will be just sort of going as quick as they can but as safely as they can to make sure the tires are hot. usually great to coverage out of holland too some good pickies there's some Good bike cam set up, so we should get plenty of the action from here as they stream around now through this and less bend section. We'll get a good look at uh, how they're running. Swan's still out in front. Doohan's well placed, and so is Beatty. Yeah, Doohan having a little look up the inside. Not quite. Good chance maybe into the right-hander down here. No. The, the thing with Assen is the corners run from one corner into another. Uh, the difficult part is changing direction here, not so much through this part of the circuit, but uh, some parts of the circuit, normally you steer the bike, you climb from one side or the other to change direction, but especially at Aston, you have to steer it with your feet. Now, the way you, you don't put your feet on the handlebars or anything. What you do is you put pressure on the footrest. That's a good shot. It looks like doing in front there. Um, you, what you do, you put pressure on the footrest to change direction. Now, what's going up through here? There's another right-hand kink. Now, changing direction there, you don't jump from one side of the bike, you push the bike with your feet. Doohan's gonna have a go at the inside. No, not quite close enough. Showed him his wheel though, the Australian said to Swans, here I am. Now, that on-board camera looks like it was on uh, Daryl Beatty's bike, Beatty's who's bike. in third place. Yeah, so good pictures tonight. Now, this surface too, I know that you've said this to me before, it's a very grippy place. Oh, it's really grippy, but uh, when uh, when the bike lets go here, it really lets go. Normally, uh, you can sort of... Sp oh, oh, down, Beatty. Oh, no, Beatty off. We're just talking about being oh, such a grippy place. He's up and OK. Oh, oh another one someone else. Too. That's a, that's a Kajiva. Kajiva. Chandler or Maladin? Maladin. Maladin. It looks like Maladin. Oh, dear Damn me. Man. Well, we're just talking about the grip of the circuit, and when they go off, they go off. We saw... There's Beatty yeah, walking. He's OK. So Maladin's down, and we're not quite sure about that. Doing now, still throwing out the ch the, uh, the challenge to Kevin Swartz. I can't believe that. Beatty really cartwheeled off on the bike, right up on the uh, 
the bridging tires there, but he was okay in walking. We're not sure about Maladden. Yeah, I wasn't quite, I couldn't quite see that right hander there, whether it was actually in the middle of the corner or just on acceleration. Here we go, now, let's on board. Look. This is on board with BT. Now watch, he's running wide. Hard to say, it looks, it doesn't, it didn't look as if the bike was at a strange angle or anything. The only thing I could assume is, oh, well, Maladden. Well, let's hope. Sophie's all right. That Maladden is okay. The stretcher uh, could be just a precautionary action there, of course. No, I just, I don't. No, oh, he's sitting up. Yeah, he's yeah, looking, he no, looks watch, okay. Watch, watch, watch. Oh. It's had a big, it's had no. a big bite on the no. front end. Well, yeah, it's just bounced a lot on the front end. Oof. Now, I don't understand. Now, Cold watch tires, it, you Barry? see. Ma no, I don't think so. Because it's, um, what confuses me is that Matt Maladin fell off as well. I can't imagine that Sandy, oh, doing, doing the lead. Doing in front and, and building a lead there off Swans. Well, well I, while we're watching it, sorry, Barry, but while we're watching that replay there, of course, Mick Doohan's got underneath Swans. Sorry. Yeah, I, I can't explain to you about that. We'll have to have a look at it again in slow-mo later. But uh, to me, it looked like there was something wrong because you saw the bike plunge really badly on the front. I don't know, you know, the simple I'm sure to... we'll get a replay of that a little later on. They've yeah. probably got some other angles I'll be looking at. Let's hope so anyway. Right. Daryl will be okay. We don't know about Maladden. We'll try and keep you in touch. Right. Um, Barros up into third. And that's Rainey there in fifth. That's Chandler behind Rainey. So, Doug Chandler with a Kajiva. Barry thinks the bike will go pretty well here. Barros is the one that you've tipped to win this, and Creville came down again in, uh, in practice. Well, he'd have to get the Training Wheels of the Year award. I tell you, he's fallen off of 500s this year, more than most people do in a lifetime. It's, he fell off again in practice, and uh, his team manager, apparently, uh, Cito Pons, is really, it's cost him literally hundreds of thousands of dollars in replacement parts you know parts carbon fiber titanium parts that only honda make that's ito there on the honda and this is um i don't know whether you remember the australian grand prix i said that i was sure that hondas were using fuel injection and they said absolutely no way well they've just come out in a press release now and according to hondas this is the first time they've raced with fuel injection well i'll guarantee that the three hondas did race uh, Philip Island with fuel injection, and now Mickey's going well. Ito back in seventh place. Now, I know that you're not going to agree with what I'm going to say, but I'm going to talk from the masses' point of view, the people who haven't raced Grand Prix bikes. I just think it's fantastic the way that Doohan's come back to us in the place where he broke his leg so badly, would have dreadful memories of the place and is riding the way he is. Because if we go back to Wayne Gardner, when he went back to Laguna Seca, he really, he just wanted to survive the race. Mm. You know, I guess it's different strokes for different folks, and that you know, I can only speak, you know, from from my own point of view and other people that I've known. It's not really affected people. You see, what you've got to bear in mind is Doom fell off here last year. He didn't ever have an horrendous accident. He had just a pretty Mickey Mouse plus uh, plus zero lap 17 to go. He didn't have a really bad accident, uh, as far as I can remember. It was at this right-hander where he fell off last year. But the, the big problem was the people that looked after him. I mean, the surgeon that looked after him and the aftercare. I wouldn't let him look after my cat. You know, it's just a disgrace. OK, back to the race. Kevin Swans aboard. 34, you're looking at there. And uh, Mick Doohan got past him whilst we're in a replay situation. but. Since he's got past, he's certainly uh, turning up the wick a little. Yeah, it's um, what I was saying before about steering the bike with your, with your feet. Um, because you don't have chance, the corners run from one corner into another. So you don't have chance to leap. You see there how Mick changed from one side of the bike to the other. That's a normal leap from one side of the bike to the other. But where you get one corner runs into another, um, then you have to put pressure on the footrest. Barros. And, and that is the thing that... Um, is going to uh, tire Doohan's legs out. Now watch Barros. Uh, maybe, no, he's not quite close enough. So Swans all over the back of Mick Doohan, but Barros is all over the back of Kevin Swans. Good race. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, and if you look in the background, that uh, looks still like Creville. And uh, Rainey, I think, just in the middle of that bunch, and Ducky Chandler behind there. You see, Barros is definitely uh, giving Schwantz the uh, the hurry up. And as far as I should think, 
I wouldn't uh, imagine that Schwantz would give Barros a hard time in any way, shape or form, because Schwantz, uh, as far as Barros is concerned, he's only going to do Schwantz good. If he can get past Schwantz and catch Mick, um, then it's only going to be right now up the inside on the... <laughs> uh, that's Schwantz. Um, you see him put his foot out there. I think he, he heard how close that uh, Barros was to him, and I think he was uh, giving Barros the nudge to go by there. We'll see. Now, watch down here. He might leave enough room for Barros to go past on the inside. No. Nope. Not that time round. It's hard to say. He's either saying, get out of my face or come past. It's, uh, <laughs> Barros it's a, now again. Look, Barry. Yeah. He's... Uh, He's right there, you know, really by rights. He should have won uh, this race last year, Barros, on the uh, Kajiva. He, um, when uh, Schwantz and Eddie Lawson came together at that um, corner where Maladin and Beatty crashed, um, it was all down to Barros, and he just uh, made a faux pas of it. But uh, having done that in Spain when he was leading, so I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me tonight if. Um, it's not Barros's night. He feels comfortable there, but so is Mick Dillon at the moment. If you've just joined us, unfortunately, uh, two Australians out of the race through crashes. That's uh, Matthew Maladden and also Daryl Beatty. And Daryl Beatty at the time was running in the top three. Looked like uh, Barros. Oh, yes, Creville going past Rainey or having a go. I'm not quite sure whether Barros got past. Oh, this is nice on board stuff from Dougie Chandler's bike. That's Alex Creville in front there. Now you see, the difficult thing about Aston, watch the outside of the circuit, you can't see it and there until you actually get to it. So it's a very difficult circuit to learn and to go fast at. But it's, uh, it's a, once you know Aston, the Dutch Grand Prix, the circuit, it's uh, one of, really one of the great circuits. A real rider's circuit. It is because you can, uh, there's enough places in it that you can make up for the, uh, this sort of the gap in the pace of the bike if a bike's not quick enough or the only thing you can't do if a bike steers badly if it handles badly around here you might just as well park it because uh you need a bike that really handles exceptionally well around here dougie chandler aboard the kajiba we're getting uh, pictures off that just a little minute or so ago and you're looking back to wayne rainey on bike number one struggling along with that bike this season Yep. And now Swans Barros past Swans is sitting back in third place, and as you said, he's quite probably Both. comfortable with the fact that Barros is out after Mick. Yeah, he will be for sure. It's interesting to see uh, Chandler going better. They found a problem with the Kajiva. They had terrible trouble with the back suspension, and uh, what they've done, they've changed from the Japanese suspension back to the Swedish suspension. And when you saw their engineer working trying to trying to sort it out so um, it's no wonder they've changed okay a good race happening here with Mick and still in front take a break bat shortly stay with us Australia welcome back nice to have your company right around Australia lap 7 of 20 Michael Doohan from Australia still in front Barros is second then Swans Rainey Creville and Chandler the top runners for you Yeah, it's interesting. As I was saying, with the Kajiva, now they've changed back to the Swedish suspension again. Um, I'm just sure they'll go from strength to strength now because they were, they were having terrible problems. And uh, to try and sort out suspension trouble, if you haven't got that right, you might just as well forget it altogether. Looks like they've done a good job, though, Baz, because it's, uh, it's going very well here tonight. Well, yeah, it's, 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 it's good that they do, you know, but... Uh, their previous suspension engineer couldn't sort out a chest of drawers, let alone a suspension. I wonder if the cows are wearing earmuffs. They don't seem to be perturbed about the bikes that are racing not that far away from them. Now, you see, Schwantz is just sitting behind Barros now. He's let uh, Alex go by, and uh, he'll have a bit of a breather now and just follow follow Barros and see, see what's going to happen and just size it up because... Believe it or not, just to sit in third place like that, you're just ticking along watching what the other guys are doing, and it's really not that hard work. Well, let's hope that Mick Dillon gets some luck tonight, because, by gee, he ran out of luck last time round. He's... Ooh, oh, look at this, so yes, easy now. He just lined him up and blasted past. That's Barros. 
So he takes the lead. Barry, not a bad crystal ball you're looking at. <laughs> yeah. At this stage. Yeah. <laughs> I've sent it back a few times, I'll tell you. It's um <laughs> It's a good little, uh, it's a good little setup, the uh, Suzuki setup with the the two riders because uh, to have Schwantz, I think, would have just about got Mick there. If we can have a little look back. The Suzuki, you would, uh, no, he didn't. The Suzuki certainly would be the best bike for Aston. It's uh, it's got the best kind of power range in that it comes out of corners pretty well. It's got good mid-range power. And the handling of the bike finally this year is um, the way it should be. So the, certainly the best package for, for this circuit would be the Suzuki. Well, we've seen Barros in this position before. It's my um, old mechanic, Simon. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. In fact, this is where you won your first Grand Prix. Yeah, a long time ago. So a special place for you, Baz? Uh, it's a special place for anybody racing in Holland. So they're just so enthusiastic there. And this whole town, Assen, which is in northern Holland, just becomes motorcycle city, town, metropolis for a week. You know, they have the, the Assen race week. It's a great place. I mean, it's... Oh, Mick! Oh, that was... Would have been a good one to get past there. Swans makes a oh, move yes. this time Got on him. Mick Doohan. So Swans now moving through into second place behind his teammate Barros. And unfortunately, Mick has gone from one back to three. Yeah, that's uh, that's not a drastic problem. What we've got a what the only the only thing I would be worried about with doing would be the the stamina in his leg, the changing directions of it, because this would certainly be the hardest on him physically with his injuries. You see, going through there, you don't leap from side to side of the bike. You just push on the foot pegs to change direction and. Uh, at the best of times, in the best of health, Hassan is really very, very hard work. So physically demanding riding a 500cc Grand Prix bike here, but the Suzuki's at the moment running one and two, doing giving them nothing away, though, hounding Swans all the way. Perhaps he's having his little breather now. Yeah, I did, you know, Duan looks pretty comfortable. He's not, um, it doesn't look like he's really pressing on yet. So, and, you know, this... Uh, Plenty of laps to go, yeah, what have we got? You know, eight out of 20, that's that's a long time. You know, 20 laps around Aston is enough for anybody. So the best time to really put the pressure on is the last three laps, really. Great shot, the low shot gives you the idea of speed here at Aston. Some nice work here from uh, the Dutch television coverage, some good pitches, nice clear pitches, and some nice onboard stuff as well. So Kevin Swan sitting in behind Barris and Doohan just hounding him all the way. Yeah, he looks um, pretty comfortable at the moment, Doohan. And uh, as does uh, Schwantz, you know, I'm sure Schwantz is just sitting behind uh, Barros at the moment, letting him make the pace, because that's where all the hard work is. Oh, right. Rain his bike just shaking uh, around. Yeah, that's, uh, you see, his bike didn't, uh, if you look there, it didn't dive down too much on the front when he was braking. And uh, it seems to make the back skitter around quite a lot. So, um... It's Creville. As we mentioned, crashed in practice. Sitting in behind Rani. So Rani's doing a, a pretty good job on the bike that probably is the worst of all of the bikes to ride around this, this circuit. Well, it, uh, at one time, the Yamaha was the best bike to ride around there because it handled really well and uh, the power characteristics were very good for it. But... Uh, it certainly seems at the moment that um, frame-wise, they, they've lost the plot. They've had more frames this year than, than any other team has in a decade. See, doing there, maybe just if he's on the right-hand bit, maybe... No, not quite close. Enough. Had a look, but just couldn't get in the right position. But proving that he's still very, very competitive, just sitting back in third behind the Suzuki's. Barros is in front. Kevin Swan second and Michael Doohan. Then we go back a long way to Rainey, Creville and Doug Chandler. Yeah, the um, the Honda guys have played around quite a lot with the uh, mixed bike, mixed, mixed engine, the characteristics of it. They've made it a lot more sort of user friendly. They've made it more like it was last year um, because he was saying that uh, it was a bit like a sort of a, a time bomb. You know, you just put the power on and it had come in with such a bang, it'd be like a rocket ship. 
and it'd spin the wheel and it'd be very hard to ride. Well, that kind of thing around this circuit you really don't need. So what they've done, they've calmed the, they've made the power a little bit smoother, um, which is obviously uh, done the trick because he doesn't look like he's doing it hard at the moment. So Swans every now and then just climbs up beside Barris, puts a wheel in to let him know where he is, and then just quite comfortably drops back half a lead. Well, yeah, you see, when you get a situation where you've got three guys riding around this early in a race, um, they're not gonna, they're not gonna sort of, you're not gonna get one clear off and disappear, and that's on board Doug Chandler's way. So what you do in a situation like that, you just sort of swap it about amongst the three of you. If you can get past without causing anybody any aggravation or any aggravation yourself, you have a little go and lead for a lap, and then somebody else comes past you. And what it does, it, it's interesting to do that because it keeps you occupied. In doing that, you're sussing other people out, seeing where they're quick or slow or bad or good. And uh, then when it gets to the last sort of three laps is when uh, it's no holds barred. Interesting to note this time round, Ito was on the podium in the last race, but he's uh, a fair way back this time. Yeah, he is, because it goes back to the circuit. This was what I was saying, uh, the Beatty had done fantastically well to qualify on the front row of the grid, and Maladin had done really well to qualify where he did, because it's not the easiest of the circuits to learn to go consistently quickly. So I would imagine that... Um, Ito is just suffering from really lack of circuit knowledge because on a 500 it's even more difficult to learn than it is a 250. You know, you, you arrive everywhere a hell of a lot quicker. Sitting behind this bunch, in fact, Wayne Rainey. We haven't seen a lot of him in the last few races. The bike has been back a little. He has made a few charges up, but he's sitting back in fourth spot at the moment. Yeah, you look at the back end of Rainey's bike drifting out that uh, double right-hander there. He was um, apparently very, very frustrated after Hockenheim. And uh, you can understand it because he just simply didn't have the speed. But what I really can't understand is um, where, where they're getting it, Schwanz back in the lead again, where they're getting it wrong at the moment. You know, they, they did have a very good handling bike at one time and uh, they really have played around with it a lot, maybe too much. So Kevin Schwanz now takes the lead. Back off Barris, doing still in third place. The two Suzuki pilots doing battle here at Assen. 11 out of 20. You see, as um, the mode that Schwantz is in now, so different from say three or four years ago, he'll be he would be quite happy or quite prepared to take second or third because he knows he's just stacking the points up. Whereas at one time Kevin's attitude would be to oh, I've got to win this thing or go blow or knock a hole in the fence. And Kevin is really in the right frame of mind the way he's going about his racing to win the World Championship. So if either Barros or Doohan give him a hard time towards the end of the race, rather than risk anything, you know, he'd, he'd succumb to the pressure. Well, apart from about the last half lap, I mean, Mick's been right with him. Now Barros, Barros he goes back to the lead again, takes it off Swans. again. Look at Swans. Inside again is Swans. He is amazing, this guy. He doesn't need much room to work with. Well, that's the incredible thing about him. I mean, he can uh, he can reach the parts that no one else can. I mean, he's just exceptional when it comes to uh, tucking it up the inside and up the outside and on the brakes. So I don't think there's anyone any better. I mean, Barris, what a psychological letdown. You, you get past him with a pretty smooth move, and Ooh. all of a sudden he does that to you. Back end of Barros's thing just... Uh, starting to um back in the rear tire starting to get a little bit greasy now barros was saying that uh he in the first uh, qualifying session he uh he went very well then in the second one he fell down right at the beginning of the session so he said that um in doing that uh he, he didn't get to try enough tires you know enough different compounds of tire to see which tire would do the uh the race distance so unless He's um, chosen the same tyre as Schwantz has, or maybe he's done a gamble on a tyre. So if you see Barros' bike sliding around a lot, that's what it is, tyre trouble. So Doohan's sitting right in behind him, so he's got a good view of what the bike's doing. He knows exactly what it's doing. Yeah, you see, um, Doohan will be quite happy to sit there. All the time you've got that sort of space in, that's nothing around Assen. I mean, that is no, uh, that is no big deal. You know, just... Uh, 
couple of corners on the brakes or run it through the fast fast left hand kink quicker and you make up 40 meters in one fell swoop so uh, if it's this close it's it should be a good um good last couple of laps well it's a great race as the last round was and the one before that we've seen some fabulous dicing and the 500s in the last three rounds it's just been sensational stuff now that look here and you see look at the run look got him now you see that's just through getting around the right hand kink a couple of schwanzy fast again in the same place that's just through getting a little bit of a run two maybe two kilometers quicker through a fast kink and the next bend you arrive at you're going eight or nine kilometers quicker he just puts it up the inside time and time again spectacular man to watch kevin swans it's a great it's it's lovely to be in a in a situation like this where you've got uh, you know three of you having a, a nice little ding dong because if you're out on your own the race seems like it's an endurance race and it, you can get bored well not exactly bored but you get paranoid that something's going to go wrong with a bike you hear noises that don't exist and it seems like a hundred laps whereas when when the three of you are, are dicing together like this it's interesting and the race goes really quickly so Kevin Swanson you can see doing all over the back of Barros now doing there looks he was having a bit of trouble changing directions there he ran in quite wide on the right hand bit and then had to pick it up quite a long way to get to the left hand bit so that if um we'll watch on change of directions again if that happens then that signifies he's getting a, a little bit tired so can michael doing make the distance up on the two suzuki stay with us back short Welcome back to the Dutch Grand Prix exclusive here on Nines Wide World of Sports. 13 of 20, Barros out in front of Swans. Michael doing dropping back slightly in third, then Rainy Creville and Chandler. Uh, it's good old Case Derakas there, the local Dutchman. Mick Doohan. Now, to be interesting, if you, if you uh, watch on the change of directions, especially at the chicane, um, maybe Mick just ran in a little bit deep there and therefore had to bring it back a long way to change direction. But that will give you, it gives you, that is the first sign usually that someone's getting a little bit tired. So we're coming up to the same place again. And uh, what Mick did, he ran in a little bit deep here last time. And it was, you know, you have to come back a long way to change direction. But um, it's something that anybody could do one lap as a sort of a little bit of a mistake or whatever and you see there now he was he wasn't any slower through the chicane so hopefully it was just a you know he just ran in a bit deep yeah lost nothing there did he no nothing not at all but that's the only way you pick you know you can pick it up when when something's going wrong or getting tired or whatever it is that's the only little signals that uh, that you get but if you look there it's interesting to watch the uh what's the the shot from the helicopter because you can see see you see how doing was quicker out there than uh, Schwantz and especially this um, when you come through this there's a long left loop here and if we get an aerial shot of the of the fast section you can really see how much difference it makes uh, when people go just a little bit quicker like through this right hand here you just need a fraction more speed through there and when you come up to this next left hand you're going quite a bit quicker so your prediction at the start of the race in fact on the uh, warm-up lap that Barris could win this is looking okay well it is at the moment there again it wasn't the Spanish <laughs> Grand Prix <laughs> but no you know I I think that he stands the best chance tonight that he stood of winning a Grand Prix but, so there again he did in Spain part in the bushes so we don't know I hope he does I'd like to see I'd like obviously to see Mick win it um, but it's nice, I always force somebody getting their first Grand Prix win and getting it out of the way. Just really sad with Beatty and Maladin. I just uh, can't understand that with the, with the um, Beatty thing. It looked confusing, he may have locked something. I don't know, we'll have a look on the replay, but I didn't even see Maladin. All I saw was Maladin's bike come into view, so we, we haven't got the faintest idea what happened there. So the laps are running down now. 
the gap really hasn't changed with three. It's been a real dogfight. Six to go. You see, really, what Schwantz will be interested in, he knows uh, by his pit bull where Rainey is. And uh, Rainey is the only one that Schwantz is worried about at the moment because the other guy um, with the points was BT. Oh, good run out of there, Mick. Um, yeah, Beatty was the with the guy in third position with the points, so Beatty's out of it. So Schwantz won't be too worried. You know, all he's worried about is where Rainey is. So Rainey's way back from this group. He was leading the next bunch of riders, which was Creville and Doug Chandler. But the real interest is here. Will Kevin Swantz sit back and let Barris have a win? I'm not sure. Oh, no. I don't think forget so. That. I mean, he's a good, good enough sportsman. I don't think so. <laughs> Kevin, but not a chance. Now, watch this. You can just see the difference. See who's down. Look at the guy in the, in the middle. You see the difference it makes? That's just through going a little fraction quicker. Quite amazing. That's, what's that? That's Creville, Chandler and Rainey, I think, isn't it? Yeah, that's the positions, yeah. That's the group in behind the top three that we've been following. On board now, Doug Chandler. All right, this is behind Rainey. What's well, the back end of Rainey's bike, see if it slides around. He's on Dunlops, and it'd be interesting to see. Anybody that's never seen this before, you turn your head opposite way to which the bike's going, then it looks normal. Still pretty close, Daz. Barrow still there from Swanson Doohan. They've been like this, lap after lap. Doohan's had a go a couple of times. He's showing the wheel, but then just uh, Swanson's closed the door. But look at this, they're so close now. Mick, that losing through the S's there. Nah, not at all. Oh, he, I'm sure he just sort of ran in a bit deep on the brakes that other time because he certainly doesn't look tired. Every now and then, Kevin Swans looks like he's about to pounce, and Barris just turns the wick up a little harder. I reckon lap 18 is the time, the beginning of lap 18 is when you say, right, you've got a couple of laps to go, and you can put everything into it. And unless somebody gets a sort of a Schwanzy up the inside, unless somebody gets a little bit of a lucky break that they've made for themselves, there's not really any sense in going all out five or six laps from home. Unless you get that little break to start with, then it's worth putting the pressure on. Well, Swans has just answered the call whether he's going to race him or not. <laughs> there was never any doubt. Now, you'll soon see whether... Barrow's having a look it does where look, was. It does look as if Schwantz has is, uh, gone into business mode now. He's got his head under the screen through that kink there, and he hasn't... Uh, really bothered too much through there before he just i just get the idea that he's uh pressure on time he seems a lot more comfortable doesn't he i mean look at that he can he can open up a couple of lengths there yeah he's definitely he's on the power now you're dropping mick off a little but as you said that's nothing to worry about here well there's nothing to worry about because you see you don't when say you're in doing position now you don't really realize that the guy that's leading the bunch has all of a sudden said, right, I'm going, until sort of half a lap's gone by. You think, oh, he's going quick. And then you think, right, OK, well, he's he's decided now's the time to go. So it catches you unawares a little bit. And then uh, it takes a good sort of three quarters of a lap to settle down again. That's um, behind Creville. Bit of good dice, Just this listen, one, too. Listen, have a listen to it. Yeah, it's, um, I thought he was might just have got through on the inside there. It's been a good dice. There's, these three have been hard at it. The other three just as hard at it, even though they're running mm. in, uh, in separate areas of the track. Yeah, it's, it's getting real close now, this front one. So Kevin Swan, Suzuki, leading Barros Suzuki. Mick Doohan Honda closes up again. Yes, goes down got the him. inside. Nice one. So Michael Doohan now moves up into second. Yeah, he's good through uh, that little bit, Mick. That's where he's, he's made a bit of ground uh, in previous laps out of there. Barry, there's been some talk that Mick's using a, a hand-operated rear brake lever. Do we know anything about that? Oh, yes, he is. He doesn't have a rear brake on the bike at all, as far as one that you use with your foot. 
he has one on the handlebar, which is like a jet ski throttle. And uh, he, because his uh, his um, foot still isn't right to his right foot still isn't right to um, go in and out, you know, to use the rear brake. He, mm, not quite. He's he's using the one on the handlebar, and he was saying that he likes it. Um, and even when his leg's OK, he'll more than certainly still use it on the handlebar. Yeah, interesting stuff. I wasn't sure if he was still using it. Yes, oh, yes, he certainly is. Second place now, but Barros riding behind him. Swats out in front. This is the three that are going to fight it out. Running out of laps, four to go. As we look down on the second of the bunches, and that's, of course, the fourth, fifth, and sixth. And that's been a good fight, too. Graville yeah, it's, it's and Rainey. It's the carbon coffee, isn't it? Yeah, what's well, going on the first three. Exactly. And Chandler's hanging into that group yeah, as well. Yeah, he's got there now. Yeah. So he's leading that beach, that uh, group now. It's and if Chandler. It's, if it stays like that, you see, um, that will please uh, Schwantz no end. But with the laps running out, we'd like to see the front runners. Because Chandler, that's a good ride from Chandler, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Great. It's amazing the difference a little bit of suspension makes. Yes. Here we go. go. Mick, Some back Mick markers involved. Duracus again. Bike number 24. But all through safely. Yeah, it's obviously uh, didn't do Barros any favours. Yeah, Barros has lost out with uh, Mr. Duracus. Now, oh, doing... yes. Now, this is his... That's Mick's. Yeah. Obviously, Mick's little favourite bit there because he's quite a lot quicker out of that. He really did close up quickly. Gets the run again. Right now, left hand kink, long right hander, and then you watch the long left hand loop. I wouldn't be at all surprised if Duan, let's watch out of this. I wouldn't be at all surprised if Duan doesn't ever go the last, the final. Oh, he's running a little bit on the wide side there. No, I don't think he's close enough now. I thought Mick was going to run through this and then the next left hand kink go. I think he was thinking about getting up the outside and trying to tuck it down the inside there. But it's not quite close enough. Closed up a bit, though. Oh, yeah, it's um, far from over. So here we go. Barros, he's, of course, he's got to contend with Barros, who would love to get past as well. <laughs> Absolutely. So he's, he's not only looking at what Swans is doing, he's really got to remember where Barros oh, is. Yes, Barros got him. Barros has got him, as, as we just predicted. I mean, he's all over the back of him. So with the laps running out, big back to third. There is a possibility of getting past Barros out of this next one, but it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. Oh, it's Barros. Oh, he's going to have a go, Reg. Oh, yeah. Sure. He oh, wants to win this one. Barros had a swans, though. And, uh, He's a tough customer to take on under brakes, Swans. Through they come. Mick a little wider this time. Gets almost up beside Barros. Can't. Can he? No, he's not close enough to get up the inside. Two laps to go. Wow. Oh, back in the Swans is just um, sliding on the acceleration there. So, Barros is definitely going to have a go. Oh, without question. He's putting so much pressure on Swans. Here he goes, charging up again. And they've dropped Mick off a little now. Yeah. Then it's Chandler, Creville and Rainey. But there it is, one, two and three. That little section there, the left and the right and the left, it doesn't look much of a left, right, left, but you try humping a bike from side to side to side there. It really is a struggle, especially at the end of the race. Barros, fastest lap. Really trying hard. Mick's trying desperately to get back in touch again with these two. Right, Barros. Now, Schwantz will do him again on the... No, he won't, because... Yes, maybe up the inside. Yes, got him again. What a right? great guy. <laughs> Look at him. Barros oh, takes him. Dear. Schwantz lined him up. Barros shut the door. Well, that's going to do Mick a bit of a favour. If uh, You see, this last section of bends on the last lap is so important. This double right-hander, to get out of this good into the next right-hander, if you make a muck-up of coming out of here by putting, say, too much power and you get it sideways a bit out of there, then it ruins your run into this fast right-hand kink here. 
which ruins your... Oh! Oh, oh no! Who's oh, that? it's... That's... I think it's Barros. It's Barros. It is Barros. Oh, the 23-year-old heading for his first win. He's all right. He's moving. Oh, that was a big oh, shunt. Oh, dear me. A big shunt, and it's not the first time he's done that whilst leading. The pressure just got to him again. Oh, what a shot. <laughs> oh, dear me. He's come off in a big way. Well, this leaves Swans now in front. This is a repeat of the Spanish Grand Prix. Barros did exactly the same thing there. Last lap now. Mick doing in behind Kevin Swans. Traffic coming into play. Yeah, and it could uh, do Mick a favour. I really didn't, uh, didn't expect Barros to do that because he, he looked like he had the whole thing together. Oh, he went off in a hard way, didn't he? Mm, nice, but he was just... okay. So now, Swans, there he is, trackside. Yeah. Alex Barros, well, a 23-year-old. The pain would be meant. There it goes. Yeah, just looks like on acceleration. I didn't first get the get the first bit of it. If you don't think this is a tough sport, did you see the way his body was being flung around there? But the nice thing about it is that you're in um, the what do they call it kitty litter the kitty litter that's an american terminology isn't it <laughs> yeah in the the oh, gubbins yeah but the angles now, what's... maybe no this is the last lap now kevin swats go mick go on leading uh, michael Woo! doing doing now coming up for a, a look at him now watch the watch this next series of bends this is the crucial double right hander now watch the distance between mick and Schwantz through through this. This is the most important bit. Just now get a good run out of here. If you put too much power in, you get a bit of a sign. No, good run out there for me. Yellow flag, no overtaking. Doing closes up. Oh. No. It's, it's, I, He's going to have a go. He's no, had a big no, go, but Swans no. under brakes is a big proposition. Oh. Do it almost up on the inside. Here <laughs> they come around now. So Kevin Swans throws it up and takes the Dutch Grand Prix for the 500cc Ooh. bikes. Michael doing only a length behind. Another great duel. He did have a big go. He had a big go, but his hands were tied, really, because if he, if he could have got past on that last section of corners, uh, he would have overtaken under a yellow flag, which you're not allowed to do. So he was kind of up a gum tree. You know, there wouldn't have been a, a yellow flag on the last left-hand corner, but uh, great ride from him. And the American flags in the force there, waiting for Kevin Swans to pick one up and ride around with it. This has become something that Wayne Gardner made a little bit of a, uh, a tradition of. Of course, that all happened down at, at Phillip Island. But here we are at Assen now, and it's the Americans' turn to carry the flag around. Another great win to Swans. Dreadful, dreadful luck for Alex Barros. Yeah, really, you, I guess you make your own luck, but uh, it's... Oh, that, yes. I would say that he could have lost the front. I need to see it again, really, to... But could have maybe lost the front there, because the position where it was... He didn't look like it was um, an acceleration job, but he's OK. That's he's, the only uh, thing. He's being consoled there on the side of the track. I'll tell you what that does. That gravel pit... What, the... Yeah, front. Front end went. Barry, now watch this. Hmm? As we said, the gravel slowing him down. Look at the angles of the body, but the bike continued to go. Now, if that gravel wasn't there, that bike could have ended up anywhere. Well, the great thing is that it didn't end up on top of him because yeah. this is the horror of it. You can be completely OK and then like Catalano in the uh, German Grand Prix got hit by the rebounding bike and uh, that can ruin your day. And of course Matthew Malatin from Australia, Daryl Beatty from Australia went out in similar fashion early in this race so three major shunts here tonight. Unfortunately Kevin Swans winning and up he goes. He does <laughs> love to win. He's got the sponsors flag. He's now got the Texas flag, the American flag. <laughs> Have a look at him. He's like a totem pole. Loves to win. We'll be back for the podium. Stay with us, Australia. So Kevin Swans now on the podium, receiving the trophy for winning this, the Dutch Grand Prix. Another proud moment for him and uh, 
Well, it's consolidating that championship. It's getting tough. But as we've said and many well, times before and many times last year, a long way to get you. It's never over till it's over. And don't forget this time last year, Mick Doohan was leading by 53 points. But I think finally this will be Kevin Schwantz's year. But Doohan would have to be really happy with that because that was a great ride. And uh, the bikes were pretty evenly matched. And uh, really, it was anybody's race. You know, I'm sure it took them. <laughs> Took both uh, Duan and Schwantz a bit by surprise when um, when Barros parked it in the sand. But um, you know the good thing is he's all, he's okay. But uh, Duan certainly going good, and uh, you know I reckon we can look forward to some really good races. Stand by for the national anthem of the United States. Every American flag that's in uh, <laughs> Holland is at that circuit. There's some there. Oh, Swans at the end of it, he carry more flags than a Boy Scout. Hmm. Swans, Michael Doohan, Alice Creville, Suzuki, Honda, and Honda. That's how they finished. Waiting for the champagne spray. Word from the circuit is that uh, BD is okay. Matthew Maladden may have a broken collarbone. That is not confirmed yet, but uh, that seems to be the feeling from uh, Acid. So, Barry, results recapping. Good ride for Schwantz. Second, Mick Dern. Third, Alex Creville. Good ride from Chandler. Fourth, not so happy, Rainey. Fifth, and Ito. Sixth. Championship positions now. Schwantzy getting away on 156 to 128 from Rainey. Darrell Beach is third, Creville fourth. McDoom moves up a place to fifth and Ito sixth. So let's have a look now at that incident that involved Michael Beattie because uh, it was a rather strange one. Darrell Beattie. Oh, Darrell Beattie. <laughs> I was close. Yeah, you were close. Yeah, if you watch here, coming into that, you see the bike sort of jumps a bit on the way in. Now, there's only basically three things that can be that is now watch the marshal running that's poor old matthew maladin coming in there and it's a good job the marshal was looking because if he, had, he was standing right where max bike landed so he was very very lucky there if we have a look at it again in slow motion there's only three things it can be it can be the front fr darrell locking the front wheel up a bit because it went a little bit like that or it could have been the back end locking up or it could have been something broke on the suspension because you see the bike come in and then sort of bounce, but it could be chopping at the front. It's hard to say. You look at it. Now, have a real good... Just watch the wheels of number four. Now, he's on the brakes there. Now, watch. You see where that sort of bounces, what that could be is the front wheel locks, and you just lose the front a little bit, and then it grips. Now, watch the guy at the bottom of your screen having a good look. You see the guy just to the right having a good look and whoa, hang on a minute. Ooh. Good job he had his eyes open because look where the Matt's bike landed. Right where he was yeah. standing, yeah, so he's a pretty alert marshal. Okay. But it, it's very hard to say with that thing, you know, yeah. it's just pure guess, you know, you'd say possibly locked up the front, possibly.